بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Welcome everybody from around the world. My name is Bilal Abdul Kareem, and this is the BAK Show. Now we're going to be discussing some serious developments which have been taking place here in the Middle East. Uh, everyone has heard about the attacks that Hamas Al Qassam brigades um, have pulled off um, on the uh, Israeli occupied territories. Now, I'm not going to call these territories Israel because it's not Israel. It's not Israeli territory. These are uh, Palestinian territories that are occupied by Israel. Now, that that is going to be a very, very important uh, topic going forward. Now, um, just to give you a bit of an update, uh, the Qassam brigades have launched a major attack, an unprecedented attack, land and by way of the air as well. For example, um, by way of the air, they have new devices in which they've been able to uh, launch paratroopers into Israeli occupied territory. Uh, in terms of by land, they penetrated the barriers between um, the Israeli controlled territory and the Palestinian uh, controlled territory and were able to penetrate deep into uh, Israeli uh, controlled territory. Now, this is huge. Why is this huge? Because it displays uh, capabilities that the Israelis and the rest of the world had no idea that they had. And the result of it was that the uh, Israeli uh, government had admitted that 212, 212 Israelis were killed. Of course, the uh, death toll is significantly higher than that. But if you have been studying anything about Israeli uh, a protocol, they always, without exception, downplay their losses. Um, uh, in addition to that, uh, the Qassam brigades and the uh, Hamas fighters have been saying that they have uh, taken quite a few, quite a few, um, uh, uh, prisoners of war, uh, I guess you could call it, absolutely, you could call it the pr prisoners of war because even uh, the Israeli pr Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that we are at war. And we're going to talk more about that in just a little while. In addition to that, uh, they captured uh, quite a few uh, different uh, military vehicles from the Israeli uh, forces as well as uh, burned out tanks and such like that. Now, something's very significant here. Now that they have, they actually have Israeli prisoners, I believe, and Allah knows best, that that's going to lessen the response of the Israeli uh, forces because as we saw in pictures, they had uh, male prisoners, uh, soldiers, female prisoners, and it appeared as if they had some non-combatant uh, uh, prisoners as well. Now, when we call it non-combatant prisoners, I didn't say civilians. Now, let's, let, let's talk about this for a minute. I didn't say civilians because we have to understand something. Uh, why, can, why is it that we can say that if the Israelis took non-combatants from the Palestinian territories, then we could call them civilians, but not the other way around. Well, that's very clear because the Palestinian territory occupied. They are occupied by people and therefore they cannot be termed as innocent civilians as the Israelis would like for it to be termed. It's because it's, it's very simple. If I decide that I'm going to um, uh, be with some people who are stealing other people's land or their house. I decide to come into the house, set up a chair and sit down in the chair. When the other people come to uh, take their house back and they start shooting and I say, hey, look, I'm a civilian. What are you talking about? No, I decided that I was going to live in occupied territory. That was a decision that was made by the uh, men and women in the Israeli occupied territories and they have to live with that decision. 
And that's the reality of the situation. All right, um, we've given you some information here and uh, we're going to start taking some of your questions and some of your comments in just a second. But I wanna bring people up to speed on some things that have been happening here in Syria as well. Uh, there was a massive drone attack which took place in homes here in Syria. 80 people were killed at a military parade um, or graduation ceremony uh, for uh, fighters which would have been uh, deployed to the Assad army. Now, up until this moment, no one has taken responsibility for it. And uh, therefore, um, we have to leave a big question mark um, above the actual attack. More than 300 wounded. This was an unprecedented attack in uh, 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 Assad controlled territories, or I guess we should say uh, within the last uh, uh, X amount of years, because we're here in the, in the uh, in a war zone, so we do have these types of attacks which do take place uh, sometime, but not on this scale and not within the last, we'll say, eight years. Okay, um, we're going to give people an opportunity. Um, if you would like to uh, comment or, uh, or have a question either about the situation what's taking place here in Syria or, or precedented attacks which are taking place um, in uh, 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 in the uh, Israeli slash Palestinian uh, occupied territories. Okay, so let's just take a look and see um, what chat uh, uh, has to say. And he says, Assalamu alaikum, did Syrian army attack rebels? All right, in a response, in a response, we're not gonna necessarily say that it was about this attack, but in a response, if you want to believe the Assad uh, government, they launched massive um, aerial assaults in the Idlib uh, territories, and, uh, killing scores of civilians, uh, 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 attacks which took place in the Darateza area, Dana area, uh, Idlib city, and uh, Jisr Shahur, and other places. Um, where uh, scores of civilians pouring into the uh, hospitals there. And um, once again, no one has taken responsibility for it. So it's unclear who carried out those attacks uh, exactly. Yes. Um, there's another question that's here. Oh, we want to let our people know um, that are following us on Twitter that uh, if you would like to uh, uh, join us, uh, join the conversation, and you have something that you'd like to say, we'd be very happy to hear from you. Uh, so let's do that. Now let's just, let's get back to uh, chat, uh, Chat's uh, question. And he says, what's Hamas's plan? Well, I certainly cannot say what Hamas's plan sitting here um, in the middle of uh, Northern Syria. I, I, I can't pretend that I know what Hamas Hamas's plan is. However, a uh, spokesman for brigades did say that one of the goals of the operation was to take prisoners. Now, if you go back to Gilad Shalit, who was a, uh, a, a fighter from the uh, Israeli Defense Forces who fell into the hands of uh, Hamas fighters, and so he was a prisoner, and he was a prisoner for several years. And there were negotiations that took place for a number of years. Um, before he was actually released. Now, you have to understand that, um, or at least I believe that the taking of prisoners as a goal was to secure certain concessions going forward against the Israeli forces. Uh, everyone around the world knows how merciless the IDF can be, and uh, they needed to have some insurance rather than just to launch the rockets now, they launched 5,000 rockets um, into um, Israeli occupied territory. Now that doesn't even include the aerial assault of their paratroopers landing inside Israeli occupied territory. In addition to that, they also uh, uh, la uh, launched uh, attacks where they penetrated the barriers between the two territories. So it's serious business uh, um, here in these territories. Okay, let's take a look and see what uh, Abdul Kurdi says. He said, CNN said the Iranians 
armed Hamas. Is this true or false? Salam, my brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, the Iranians are have been known to assist uh, Hamas's fighters in their war against uh, the occupying forces of the Israeli government. That's a known fact. However, can we say that this is the result of direct Iranian uh, 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 assistance? Uh, I do know that that the Hamas brigade uh, or Al Qassam has the ability to make homemade rockets um, without Iranian assistance. However, did the Iranians help them? Are they planning to help them in the future? Uh, what role did the Iranians play? Uh, so far, we have uh, any word on that. The um, uh, Hezbollah group in Lebanon has said that they are carefully monitoring the situation that is taking place in the Palestinian territories. Um, and who knows, will they be willing to join the fight? Well, we do know that the uh, uh, Hamas uh, spokesperson um, has been saying all day, basically, which means in English, if you've got a gun, go and get it. Uh, because they are now uh, continuing to carry out their operations. As we made mention earlier, they are still, still Qassam Brigade fighters in Israeli territory fighting even as we continue this broadcast. So this is not uh, something that is a small operation. But now we want to talk about something different here. Um, how is this going to change the dynamic um, in Riyadh? Well, let me bring you up to speed just a little bit here. The, uh, the Saudis have been keen to open negotiations, three-way negotiations with the Americans so that they could secure certain guarantees. And I will explain. Uh, in exchange for normalization with uh, Israel, the Saudis are saying that they are going to champion the Palestinian cause if you believe that. Uh, in addition to that, they want security guarantees uh, from the Americans that basically uh, entails an Article 5 type security arrangement, which means that if Saudi Arabia comes under attack, i.e. from Iran or from other uh, uh, entities for that matter, the United States of America will basically come to their aid and assistance. In addition to that, they also want guarantees of no interference uh, should the Saudis pursue a, a civilian nuclear uh, uh, a program. That's what the Saudis want. Now, that seems pretty much like uh, that's dead in the water right now, because the first question that the Israelis are going to say, hey, if, you're, if we're going to make this deal with you, what about those guys uh, uh, out there, the Al Qassam Brigade? Can you rein them in? Of course, the question would be absolutely positively no, yet, nada, forget it. They cannot rein them in. Mohammed bin Salman, in actuality, does not care about the Palestinian uh, 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 cause. He's basically using that as a way so that he can normalize with Israel without having to get involved in some messy negotiation uh, regarding the Palestinian territories. So he gives lip service to the Palestinian cause, basically saying that he's going to uh, try to, he's going to negotiate some uh, concessions from the Israelis, which up until now, we haven't heard what those concessions potentially from a Saudi point of view uh, could be. All we know is that when he did a Fox News interview going back around two weeks ago, he said uh, some, some nice things. But when he was asked about the negotiations, what concessions are you going to ask? Uh, the commentator asked Mohammed bin Salman, what are you going to ask for from the, uh, uh, from the Israelis uh, in terms of concessions for the Palestinians? <laughs> he smiled and he said, well, I don't want to uh, give away our negotiations uh, 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 or our negotiation tactics or things of this nature. Uh, in other words, he ain't asking for nothing for the Palestinians. That's just the reality of the situation. Come on, let's talk business here. 
He, he's shown that he does not care about the Palestinian cause. He's doing that basically to save face so that um, he will not just dump the Palestinians just like that. He will ask for some small concessions from the Israelis, some stuff about um, maybe some invest in Indian territories, maybe 50 years from now or 100 or 200 years from now, stuff that is just cosmetic and everybody knows it. The Americans are not going to care because they want to see the Israelis and the Saudis kiss and make up. The Israelis are not going to care because they can use that as legitimacy to say, hey, um, uh, you, you know, you've got the custodian of the two holy mosques, the, uh, the, mo the holiest sites in, in uh, Islam, they would say, um, who basically have recognized Israel and its right to exist. So what's your problem? So that's basically the way it's going to be. Um, it's going to be built. Okay. Um, we just want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. We are here. If you have a question or a comment, you can either uh, send it by way of chat, or if you'd like to participate by way of um, uh, by way of Twitter Spaces, because you guys are important, and we want to hear from you as well. Now we've got a question here. Um, which says, uh, is Turkey still protecting the Muslims in the northern Syria? Well, the question is going to come about, well, which Muslims are you talking about exactly? Um, it's complicated, and I'm going to try to give you the summarized version. Uh, the short answer to your question is yes. Turkish forces are continuing um, uh, to be present in northern Syria in rebel-controlled territory around Idlib and Turkish backed uh, 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 fighters uh, in the northeastern part of uh, northern Syria. Uh, so they are continuing to arm them. There is a Turkish presence here. So that question, the answer to that question is yes. Now, uh, we did speak about the, um, the attacks in which the Russians and the uh, Syrian army launched in uh, just a Shabur, Idlib city, and other territories, uh, killing scores uh, of civilians. But now something is very, very important here. The question's got to be is that the concentration of those attacks are happening around the Idlib area. That area is under the control of who exactly? Well, that's under the control of Hayat Tahrir Sham, Abu Muhammad Jolani, and his forces. Now, up until now, um, we have not seen any preparations for any major escalations um, from those territories. Uh, there hasn't been a, a coordinated response from Hayat Tahrir Sham uh, into the territories uh, controlled by Bashar al-Assad and his forces for approximately four years. However, over the last year, there have been five incursions by Jolani's forces uh, into the Darafurat, uh, Ghazan Zaytun areas, or the areas which are controlled by the Turkish-backed rebels. It's an interesting thing to note. Even as we speak right now in the Al-Bab area, there are, a, there are reports, I cannot tell you exact troop numbers, but there are something to the tune of 1,500 uh, uh, forces or fighters from uh, Abu Muhammad Jolani and Hayat Tahrir Sham in north uh, eastern Syria in the controlled territories, the territories controlled by Turkish backed forces. And this is an interesting development because why are those fighters in other rebel controlled territory trying to, uh, to seize border crossings because they're lucrative cash uh, business, if you want to call it that? Um, and why are they in these territories when they should be mounting an assault against Bashar al-Assad's forces uh, over that have been raining down rockets and bombs right in their capital city of Idlib? Now, that's a very good question. That's a question that, to be honest with you, um, I don't have an answer for. Um, I, I wish I did have an answer for it, uh, but unfortunately, um, I don't. Um, well, let's take a look here because uh, let's see, we have we have a request here from, uh, let's take a look and see. 
we have a uh, mean here. Let's see if mean can uh, hear us. And uh, meme, when you can hear us, you can just jump right in. Uh, I'm basically just giving everybody the account of what is taking place in north northern Syria. Uh, Abu Muhammad Jolani's uh, troops are in the Darfur al Zaytun areas, the areas which are controlled by the Turkish-backed rebels, um, and they are squaring off uh, between them. Clashes, intense clashes, were taking place just last week. Uh, they were supposed to return to their territory. They did not return. However, there's been no response to protect the people in the uh, territories. However, they, um, they continue to threaten other rebels, um, you know, just across their Dir Balut border. So uh, it's like meme is not there. Okay, so... Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, so thank you for hosting the space. Um, I had, uh, I didn't have anything to rather to seek your opinion on the what Qatar had issued the statement. Um, I know that the Saudi foreign ministry issued a statement and they mentioned that the way to resolve the issue is a two-state solution. Um, and uh, I don't see, you know, what's your opinion on Qatar, what the, the issue, the, the statement that they have issued. Um, apart from that, I see that the feeling of Ummah has come back. Um, Muslims across the globe, they are happy on what's happening right now in Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like to seek your opinion on the Qatar issue on how, what is their stance and how do you see that going forward. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, well, um, Qatar's foreign ministry issued a statement saying that uh, Israel alone was responsible for the ongoing escalation of violence with the Palestinian people. Uh, it went on to call for on both sides to exercise the utmost restraint and calls on the international community to, to prevent Israel from using these events to as an excuse to launch a disproportion against Palestinian civilians. Now, uh, the Qataris, uh, had one of the strongest responses in that they did say uh, they did place the blame squarely on the Israeli side, which is a lot more than you can say any other capitals around the world where you got this weak response of, um, uh, of we call on both sides not to uh, escalate tensions or to protect civilians, blah, 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 which is a whole lot of nothing. Uh, going back to your question about uh, a, a two-state solution. It's not going to happen. I will tell you why. The Israelis are not interested in a two-state solution. The reason why they will never agree to a two-state solution is because a two-state solution would actually define their borders. They have no desire to define their borders because that would mean that they would not be able to continue to build um, settlements as they're continuing to do now. So while the negotiations are supposed to be um, up in the air, they're not, they're able to just continue to grab land, build a settlement, arm the, the, uh, the settlers, and voila, you've got more quote unquote Israeli territory. Uh, however, if they agreed uh, to a two state solution, that would mean that the borders would be clearly defined and they would not be able to continue to build those settlements. And that is a no-go for the Netanyahu government and Israeli politics in general over the last 20 years. That's why you'll hear a lot about, um, uh, uh, about oh, well, let's just negotiate without precondi uh, 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 preconditions. The reason why they're doing that is because one of the conditions that Mahmoud Abbas, who is basically punchless and toothless, uh, I'm really sorry to say, um, uh, throughout uh, his tenure since, I, I believe, 2006, 2007, um, he wants to freeze uh, settlement expansion as a precondition for negotiations. Um, the uh, Israelis are not interested in a setup like that uh, because that would freeze their settlement expansion, i.e., quote-unquote, Israeli 
territory. So forget about a two-state solution, even though they're saying that it's on the table, on the real to real, uh, it's not. And that's the reality of the situation. I've got Abu Abdullah here, and he's saying, I wanted to ask if there's a possibility of a proxy warfare by America helping Israel and someone similar helping the Palestinians. Um, I believe what you're, what you're asking about uh, here is a, a proxy war. Now, the Americans are openly backing uh, the Israelis and um, uh, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin today talked to his Israeli counterpart, basically assuring him of, uh, of America's support and saying to him that we are here to satisfy whatever military needs you may have to be able to, uh, 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 to keep Israeli civilians safe and keep the country safe. So that's a, a, a proxy fight, but it's not exactly under the table. As for the Palestinians, well, they don't have a very strong diplomatic uh, uh, arm, so therefore they don't have any real state help, overt uh, state help being uh, meted out to the uh, 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 to uh, the Al Qassam brigades and such like that. Uh, you have the Iranians, which are helping them. Um, but it's not in a very overt way, and it's not as if uh, uh, there can be a truck that takes off from Tehran and uh, just pulls into the Gaza Strip and they unload the weapons. But that's what the Americans do for, um, for the Israelis. I mean, not exactly a truck, but you understand that there are no impediments to delivering weapons from America into Israel. However, there are impediments delivering um, weapons from the, uh, 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 from the Iranians to their uh, helpers in Hamas. Okay, now let's take a look um, at a couple of things here. Um, we've got uh, from YouTube, that's an interesting question. Uh, Catherine Anita says, um, okay, let's take a look and see what else we have here um we have uh azatullah yeshkun uh i'm sorry just one second here um we've got two questions here um where are your partners jebatu nusra um rat um i jebatu nusra hasn't existed for about eight years i suppose so i guess you kind of need to uh <laughs> you're gonna have to kind of uh, do some reading so that you can get a little bit more information. Uh, Jefferson Musa doesn't exist and hasn't existed since about 2015. All right, um, we have, we've got some requests here. Um, uh, we've got Haider. Uh, so let's give Haider an opportunity to speak. Haider, um, are you there? You are on the BAK show. Um, do you have a comment? We'd, be, we'd really like to hear from you. Okay. Haider isn't uh, available um, uh, at the moment. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Trey Ketu. Can I one question? Sure. And Benjamin uh, admitted to the hospital several days from the teachers. And second question is uh, how long the Hamas can carry on this attack? I mean, it has been more than uh, 18 hours now. How long they can? Uh, and, uh, could you please help us with the with the first question again? I did, it wasn't clear. Is Benjamin admitted to the hospital? Is IBM? Is he admitted to the hospital? That is from Twitter. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can answer these two questions. Um, there's been no credible ev uh, uh, information that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has been admitted to the hospital. Um, he was in, in a meeting. Uh, uh, up until the time when we began this broadcast. So uh, unless something's happened over the last, I would say, uh, half an hour, um, I would say that um, I, I would say that that's probably not true. Uh, the second question is, how long can they keep this up? Well, look, we're going to have to ask ourselves a question here. 
um, nobody thought that they could do what they've been doing um, up until now. Um, who knew that they could um, launch 5,000 rockets into Israeli controlled territory? No one knew they had that capability. Who knew that they had the capability to launch uh, paratroopers into Israeli controlled territory? Nobody knew they had that capability. So it's very, very, um, it's very difficult to say how long they can keep this up because number one, we had no idea that they had this capability. Now, I will say that the taking of, uh, of uh, hostages, or I guess we would say prisoners, um, was a move that was designed probably to counter an Israeli response and to temper then uh, the Israeli response is probably the response is probably the word that I'm, I'm looking for uh, here. So, um, yeah, I do think that it's important that we uh, keep in mind that the Israeli prisoners are not necessarily civilians, even though they may not be combatants. Their presence in occupied territory contributes to the occupation. And that's the reality of the situation. Okay, everybody, um, we're going to uh, 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 take one last question and then we're going to leave it here. Um, we've got a question here. Is the armed resistance in Lebanon going to get involved? Um, if it becomes a longer and protracted uh, affair, I would say that it is possible. However, um, everybody would like for the uh, Hezbollah group to get involved. However, we have to understand something, that to launch a, a military operation, it takes preparation, and it doesn't happen in, in just a few hours, unless it is possible that Hamas did inform them before the operation, and they are, and they are prepared to, in, to involve themselves in this conflict. That's possible. I can't say, I can't, we can't rule it out. Once again, we didn't know that the El Qassam Brigade had the capability that they're displaying today to do the things that they've been doing. We're gonna be following this thing up. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim. Jazakum Allah I appreciate everybody joining us and uh, we'll be following it up and we'll be having more Twitter spaces and more Q&As. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.